5.45 p.m., which means it's time for BCTV's The Nightly News Roundup. I'm Roland Boyd, and alongside Joe Bushy, broadcasting from downtown Brattleboro. Joe, thanks for joining me at our uh, new setup here as well. We're getting ready to uh, put in a brand new studio set here at BCTV. Uh, so we've uh, I've given uh, over our desk back uh, up Main Street to BCTV. We get to hang out downtown while all the magic happens up there at that 230 Main Street space. It feels so far away from us right now. All right, that's enough chit-chat. we got to jam-pack some stuff in here and let you get out there and enjoy the weekend. I sure plan on uh, enjoying the weekend myself. But let's talk about what's coming up on deck tonight. Well, of course, uh, there was the inaugural ball. Chum uh, bellowed the ball there. Uh, there's a moose chase on, or really the Ooh. media is chasing a moose chasing a man. And, uh, Sugar Bowl, right? Yep, and the state is, uh, according to the pun line here on our coming up, has uh, told a local contractor to bay Bay butt butt out. out. All right, that's, uh, believe it or not, we're going to do that uh, all before uh, the 6 o'clock, the 6 bells chime uh, in the church steeples downtown. So if you've got the time, stick with us. certain ways that they hold their hands. He was very confident. He had to read a lot of papers. And the judge, he's, he does a lot of note taking, so I tried to get a picture of him looking up, but he's looking down a lot of the time. Uh, this, I want to say January. I think we're in January. I think we're in 2013. I think it's the 11th. January 11th, 2013, edition of 545 Live. I'm Roland Boyden alongside Joe Bushy, broadcasting from downtown Brattleboro. Program 545 Live, BCTV's nightly news roundup, uh, Joe, as we aggregate uh, all of Brattleboro's fantastic media into one jam-packed uh, all the news 5 to 15-minute edition. 5 to 15. And uh, we're winging it tonight. So we've got some clips, uh, but without the script, so we'll just have to see uh, how we do. All right. Uh, our first broadcast. Indeed. Um, we're going to start just briefly touching on uh, a, uh, a story about the uh, Bay Butt Construction Co. Now, uh, for those of us hanging around BCTV right studios, street. yeah, uh, we've noticed the what was at one point a lot of work going on on state health offices and uh, Department of Labor offices. Uh, then work disappeared. The building uh, has been... The workers. Seem workers, to yeah. Uh, it seems though they didn't like not getting paid, I guess. So, That's, uh, uh, the so can't blame them, I don't think. Story. Uh, you can follow up on all the details at uh, reformer.com, where they've also got a, a full story on this. But uh, the state has con- uh, has uh, terminated their contract with Baybutt Construction. Uh, uh, as it turns out, they have not been paying their subcontractors. Seems Rockingham followed suit on the library also. That's right. Uh, that uh, million dollar, nearly a, a million dollar renovation following Hurricane Irene uh, mm. is now uh, kind of up in the air. I believe so. Uh, yeah, that's just what it, that's what outside there at the uh, up outside at of our uh, yeah BCTV studios up the up the hill up the street indeed. I just came from there and I noticed that they had the auxiliary heaters going strong, so at least they're trying to keep the building warm, so that they don't have any damages while they figure out Plan B. Speaking of the state, uh, there was a state of the state address at Shumlin's uh, inauguration, though he's dubbed it a ball, an inaugural ball and fundraiser. Uh, to continue work uh, now almost two years later after Hurricane Irene, just 18 months later. Still lots of work to do and lots of money that it's going to take to do that work. But uh, his focus at his uh, inaugural address, um, education in Vermont, the state of education, state of the state, education, and uh, the role that technology plays in adapting Vermont to uh, the new ways of educating. Let's take a gander, Joe. Technology allows computers to create products that a decade ago, even five years ago, didn't even exist. It has created connections to a larger world that allows many more people to do business from Vermont that would not have been possible in the pre-tech world. All right, welcome back. Uh, Governor Peter Shumlin, uh, that was yesterday up in Montpelier. Now, uh, I want to just take a, uh, a quick look, Joe, here at 
Yeah, we will then. We're gonna take a look at. It's an interesting one right here. Yeah, let's let's put it up in split screen here so we can uh, get a look at what we're talking about. Head to uh, Peter Shulman's uh, personal Facebook page. Now he uh, does also have uh, a YouTube channel, which is how we get the video you were just watching. You can check it out as well. But uh, as you can see on the screen here, we're taking a look at uh, his Facebook page. Take this one away, Joe. In a move to further reduce recidivism, Governor Shumlin called for changes in the way courts handle drunk driving cases, including the creation of DUI treatment dockets in Vermont. Or DUI courts, I guess is what they call them. DUI treatment dockets, similar to the drug court model, help impaired drivers overcome their addiction through the close judicial monitoring of their treatment and the imposition of swift and certain sanctions and rewards I believe if I understood them at the legislative breakfast correctly, essentially leading to uh, drivers that are otherwise driving suspended, which there are hundreds, if not thousands every day in the state, essentially having a road to get their driver's license back uh, closely monitored by the, uh, uh, the Department of Motor Vehicles. So uh, um, these people are driving anyway. They're trying to get to work, feed their families, and uh, the governor's trying to uh, work out a program to uh, <coughs> make that a little bit more uh, legitimized and organized and monitor um, to uh, uh, increase those hearings, I suppose. Uh, good morning to the governor there. As uh, the governor continues his work uh, on things like education, the state has released a, uh, a mandatory um, set of policies and guidelines that uh, schools around the state will adopt around bullying. Uh, at last night's Leland and Gray, or uh, la this past week's Leland and Gray uh, school board meeting, they discussed at length uh, the bullying policy, um, something that they know they have to adopt this policy, but uh, they wanna make sure that they leave uh, their teachers, uh, faculty and administrators room to sort things out uh, the way they best see fit. Let's take a look. I mean, the policy is that we don't allow bullying. How we deal with the bullying once it happens is really more of a procedure than a policy, and we tried to pull that all out. So there's a whole lot in here that if it's not mandated that it be policy, probably makes sense to call it recommended procedure and change it so that you can adapt. A, a side note to that uh, bullying story, the uh, school shooting from yesterday in Taft, California, uh, the early information I hear is that the uh, young man who was eventually chopped down um, was out to shoot the kids that bullied him. So really, bullying has no place at all in society today never has and it never will and uh, anything to stop that is, is worth doing. Yeah, indeed and a, a big focus at uh, schools all around the area and all of the school districts and of course the state as well trying to find that balance between uh, using the state's um, resources to mandate uh, specific policies while leaving teachers and administrators uh, the leeway to uh, adapt their tactics uh, within their classrooms. All right, uh, a few more things to talk about, Joe. Uh, one is a moose chase. Now, uh, this is uh, a story that uh, the media picked up yesterday. Well, I guess really moose they might have picked it loose. up Wednesday. Yes, indeed. Uh, <laughs> however, the video was actually shot uh, two days before Christmas up at uh, Sugarbush Resort. Oh. A 19-year-old uh, male uh, out on his skis with a, a group of folks. One uh, had a camera out. Uh, found themselves uh, looking at a... Uh, a moose bearing down at them. Uh, then, really, the story is just uh, every media outlet that picked this story up uh, two weeks later. But they all hit the uh, outlets at the same time on uh, news stations across the country and across the world with uh, outlets like Al Jazeera News picking this story up as well. Let's, we've uh, compiled. Oh my God, uh, there is a moose. Let's uh, look at the highlight reel. <laughs> the skier turned runner running for his life, or so he thought. It's a case of moose versus man. 19-year-old Jeff Palmer says his life flashed before his eyes when he saw a moose coming at him. State game wardens don't believe the moose is sick, but it's just found an easier way to travel around the ski resort. HLN has Jeff's take on his first experience seeing a moose. I looked over my shoulder and it was closing on me very fast. Well, Joe, uh, the story there, really uh, how the media has, has handled this story, picked up the, this story, as you saw, if you've heard a, a little bit less about uh, global climate change, uh, the economy, or any of the other big issues, mm. must be because there's a guy in Sugarbush getting chased down by a moose. That, so. Well, that's, that's 
That trumps it all, doesn't it? Indeed. And that was just uh, <laughs> that highlight reel, just a small sampling of the news outlets that picked up this story uh, all across the nation. All right, uh, a few things to wrap up, Joe. Uh, as we launch into the weekend, I always like to uh, touch on downtown and business. Uh, I'll let you uh, just quickly brief us here on the latest. What do we get here? News. Three from the uh, Ari Bradabro hotline. Uh, just in on Brooks House news, construction on the Brooks House, originally scheduled to start in January 2013, will be delayed until later in the first quarter. Uh, where the project is complex, it's normal to have some hiccups, said Bob Stevens, an investor in the Brooks House project. A complex series of tax credits, loans, grants, and private investments must be pulled together before the building can be purchased in finality and construction can begin. So we'll look forward to hearing the updates on that as they become available. Indeed. You can find this full story at uh, ibrattlebro.com. Check it out there as you're uh, drifting through the wide array of media here in Brattlebro. All right, uh, that's a full lid, Joe. We better uh, pack it in here and let folks get out and enjoy the weekend. But uh, we'll just make sure we touch on a few more things, uh, uh, like promoting the fact that we'll be back Tuesday oh, for we'll a special Tuesday, edition. Right. And then Watch we've got uh, live. Will we be in the new set? New studio? Mm, no. We'll be in uh, some be some form of something this. down here in downtown uh, Brattleboro. But I uh, look forward to a, a new level of BCTV production here as we get ready to put some uh, high-definition things uh, in front of the high-definition cameras. All right, uh, that's full it, everybody. Uh, thanks to all the folks that contributed video here, including Rich Melanson, who's out shooting all of those uh, municipal meetings in BCTV's seven surrounding towns. You can find those on our website, brattlebrotv.org, including that Leland and Gray Select Board meeting we were looking at. Uh, all that and more, so make sure uh, you check it out and check back in with us, 5.45 p.m. Uh, next Tuesday, right here on BCTV Channel 8. Joe, thanks for joining me here in downtown again. Sure appreciate it on a haphazard Friday. Uh, that's, that's all I get to say. I'll, uh, right on. I'll cut these good folks loose here. Roger that. See you next week. Night off. Have a nice week. Are you getting this on tape? <laughs>